Hello friends, all the new and welcome to another tutorial on MK Fingerstyle Academy. I'm super excited for today's lesson because it is meant for absolute beginners looking to get into fingerstyle. In case you're new to the channel, my name is Mustafa and this is MK Fingerstyle Academy, a channel dedicated to fingerstyle content whether it's tab arrangements or tutorials, so make sure to subscribe to not miss a single beat. With that in mind, lesson 48 is at the prep grade level, which is meant for absolute beginners. We are going to cover three things in today's lesson. The first thing is very simple basic chord shapes with left hand fingerings, a basic right hand finger picking pattern, and then we're going to put the two together. And the last thing is a secret legato tip that if you apply it, after you learn the fingerings, it will make the difference between sounding flat and sounding really good. And this is very important for absolute beginners to understand because you can learn a piece with the proper fingerings and rhythm and all that and still sound bad because you would be missing on legato. And that is actually the number one thing I notice about students who join my ukulele fingerstyle basics course, especially the ones who have been playing for a while, they know and figure out how to play a piece, but after they do all the hard work, they still sound bad. And that is because they're missing the keyword here, legato. So make sure you learn the fingerings and apply that secret tip to sound awesome. With that in mind, let's get started. So the left hand chord shapes for this one are pretty simple. You start with an F major, that is your second finger on the second fret on the fourth string, open third string, first finger on the first fret on the second string, and then open first string. And the next chord is a C7 with your first finger on the first fret on the first string and then open, open, open. It doesn't get easier than that. And then you play the other C7 with the high C on top. People on the internet use their third finger, but in finger style, I prefer if you use your fourth finger because your third, second and first finger will be required to play other frets. So that's your fourth finger, the pinky on the third fret and then open, open, open. And then back to the F major. So the first four chords are F, C7 with the first fret, C chord, back to the F major. Now with the F major, we're going to transition into our fifth chord, that is a D7. So that's your second finger that is already there. And then you're going to play an open third string and then your third finger will play the second fret on the second string, that's your F sharp, and then an open A string or open first string, and that is your D7 chord. And then we're going to play a G minor chord after that, that is open fourth, second fret, second finger on the third string, third fret, fourth finger on the second string, and then first finger, first fret on the first string. Again, on the internet, you see people using their third finger, but I'm a big fan of using my fourth finger because it leaves that crucial finger out, which allows me to play other frets, which in later grades will become crucial to your fingerstyle technique. So might as well learn things properly at the very beginning. But I'm a big fan of you do it however you wanna do it. So if you wanna use your third finger, go for it. But if you ask me, I'll use my fourth. So that is D7, G minor, back to the C chord that we already know and then F major chord. So we have eight chords in total that I want you to learn them in two groups of four. So think of them as four chords by four chords. The first four chords are F, C7, C, F, and then you have the D7, G minor, C, and then the F. If you don't know those chord shapes, it will take you a while to learn them, maybe about an hour of dedicated practice. But if you already know those chord shapes, I highly recommend you spend 15 to 30 minutes just practicing shifting or cycling through these chords the way I just did. That will take care of your left hand. Now we wanna take care of your right hand. And we're gonna apply a finger picking pattern. Now in this finger picking pattern, we are going to assign our thumb, index, middle, and ring to strings four, three, two, one. But it's very important that I stop and mention here that I do not teach people to assign their PIMA or PIMA to strings four, three, two, and one. Instead, in my course, I teach my students to always think of the context and pick the best fingerings for that context. In this case, it just happens to be that PIMA were great on strings four, three, two, one. But I don't want you to think of that as a rule, even though the internet teaches it, but there are many, many contexts, even at the prep grade level, where you don't follow that rule. So it's best to learn the universal rule, which is 
pick your fingerings based on context. So with that in mind, I'm gonna finger an F major chord and I'm gonna use this pattern. Thumb, index, middle, index. That's group number one. Thumb, index, middle, index. And then group number two is ring, index, middle, index. Again, ring, index, middle, index. So group number one, write it down, is thumb, index, middle, index. And group number two is ring, index, middle, index. So the way the finger picking pattern worked is you would play group one once, and then group two three times. That would complete one bar or one chord. If you put them together, and then you would play that finger picking pattern on each chord that you've learned. So once you're able to cycle through the chords with your left hand and play the picking pattern with your right hand, it's time to put them together and work on our legato. So what I notice in most beginner students, especially the ones who are used to strumming, and guess what? Most ukulele players get introduced to the ukulele through strumming. But if you're a strummer, then you're used to strumming a chord. You would shift the chord and continue your strumming. That might work in strumming, but in finger style, it does not work. And if you play it like that, by shifting your left hand as you change the chord, you will cut all the notes and sound broken or not legato. So what you want to do when you play in finger style, and in this case you're really just playing a finger picking pattern, there is no distinct melodic line or distinct bass line, you're just playing arpeggios one after the other, then it's very important that the whole thing rings across until it changes. So if you play the F major chord, as you notice when you go into the C7, you really don't need to let go of the F note on the second string. The only note you need to let go of is the A, which is the second fret on the fourth string. So if I go from the F major chord, I let go of it first, notice how my F is still on the fretboard. And now I can let go of it, and now I can position my B flat note. C7, I don't need to move anything, but notice how I'm keeping my B-flat ringing, and only now, as I need that high C, do I press it. I'm gonna leave that high C on, and then I'm gonna put my second finger first, open, and then I position my first finger, then let go of the fourth, how I didn't let go of my first finger, then I position my third finger. The hardest transition, you play the open, second finger, only then do you put your fourth finger, you can let go of the third now, and then you put the first finger after. Then I'm gonna keep all my fingers, play the open low G, then let go of my second, then let go of my fourth, then I can position that high C, and then... So the universal rule when it comes to legato that I teach to my students in my ukulele thing style basics course, and I highly recommend you write this down, is this. Only move your fingers when you absolutely need to. And if you go back into this tutorial, you'll notice that we only moved our left hand fingers when we absolutely had to in the transitions. After you learn your fingerings and spend all that hard work, you don't want to sound flat, you want to sound good. So it's totally worth that extra effort to connect your notes and sound legato. You can sound like a master even at the prep grade if you pay attention to that level of detail, which is all what I teach in my ukulele thing style basics course. So if you're interested, make sure to check it out in the video description. With that in mind, once you learn those three elements, it's important that you learn this slow. If you're comfortable with a metronome, go for it. If not, just make sure you're playing this really 
slow until you're comfortable with all the movements and then you can speed it up. I hope you've learned something from this video. Expect anywhere from a single day to a whole week to learn this piece. If you approve of this, make sure to give it a super thanks or support me on Patreon to make sure I can pump out content similar to this. See you in the next video.